Hey guys, on today's show, we're going to discuss my new GoBox build. Now, this came about due to a challenge from a fellow YouTuber, and I really hope I did it justice, but we're going to see it right here, right now on Ham Radio for Non Techies. Welcome back. As I said, guys, uh, this is a uh, go box build that I did for me to have a, a, a dedicated POTA box or an off grid radio setup. And it came about due to a challenge from another YouTuber during a, a friendly discussion one night. So uh, we're going to go downstairs here and I'll explain all that and show you the whole box, what's in it, and everything's ready to roll. So I'll see you guys downstairs. All right, guys. So welcome back. Like I said uh, earlier, uh, we're going to discuss my new go box and what I built. And I got a little bit of a backstory to talk to you about this first. Uh, when I first got my radio, I, I decided on the radio that I wanted. You, know, you guys know from previous videos, I bought the BioNO uh, battery and the solar panel, 100 watt solar panel, and the uh, solar charge controller. And I was all happy with this. I was actually originally going to be building. Uh, let me grab this. I was originally going to be building a battery box, just like the one that uh, Mike over K K M R D. I had built, so I was actually planning on, I had a larger one of these, it's actually out in the shop right now. And I was gonna build a battery box, I have a battery box, have my solar panels, and then I was gonna use my little uh, box I bought from uh, Harbor Freight and have it all ready to go. Well, we were on a chat, a late night chat one night, and I was talking about this and I sent some pictures, and Mike's kind of hacking on me a little bit, he's, he's screwing with me a little bit. And he's like, well, you know, I, I can't do the whole uh, the whole uh, uh, imitation voice he does of, uh, I forgot the guy's name now. But he's like, you know, uh, your go box should really be everything all in one box. You know, everything all in one, one spot. Uh, okay. All right, well, we'll play that game. I can play that game. So uh, that's how this came about. So this is after months of planning and sourcing parts and materials and stuff. This is the final uh, product that I got. So we'll pop it open here and I'll do some more explaining. So this is a Gator box. And for those of you who don't know, the uh, Gator box is actually a rack mount system for musicians uh, to use for their equipment and their effects pedals and all that kind of crap. Uh, so I repurposed this as a couple other hams have done. And I repurposed it to be an actual go box for uh, all of my gear for doing POTA and just being completely wireless and, and uh, cord free, basically. Uh, setting it up, you know, putting putting the parts where I wanted was easy. The hard part for me was the wiring. I'm not really the best at wiring stuff. And I actually had a fan of the show that I'd made friends with that lives locally around here. Uh, he knew a little bit more about this than I do. Than I do and uh, he came by and we sat here for a couple of hours and we figured it all out and got it all uh, ready to roll. So anyway, without further ado, what I did is I got the 4U version, because, and, and I've seen other people use these things. They got the 6U, which is much bigger, but since I'm only using a Yaesu FT891 in here, the larger size case wasn't going to, it was just swallow this thing. I only had a couple items I wanted in here to begin with. I want to keep the bare minimums exactly what I need and keep it all rolling. So I have my FT891. So that's rolling there. In next to that, I got a speaker running out the side. And then back behind this panel, I actually have my tuner. And the tuner that I chose for this was the LDG uh, Z100 Plus, I believe it was. Well, it took like a month and a half. I was waiting like a month and a half for this tuner to come in. And I wanted to get the box set up, have everything ready to go. So when it did come in, all I do is pop it in there and be ready to roll with it. And that really wasn't going to happen for a little while. So I went online, I looked at the uh, specs of the actual tuner, and they said that it was five and a half by five and a half by one and a half. So I thought about where, what do I have out in my shop that I could use to do this? Well, my solution was I had a two by six sitting out in the garage, and I cut it down to five and a half inches by five and a half inches. A two by six is already one and a half inches, and this is the exact size of the tuner that's back behind here. So I was able to mount this back behind there and kind of get my idea of where I wanted things to go. And that allowed me to keep moving forward with getting the build done. So that's the little story behind the little block of wood here. 
uh, what I did is, aside from the radio, and I'll show you the back end here in just a second. Aside from the radio, I did grab this USB power. So I've got this set up here. And now that I'm trying to show you guys, it's, oh, there we go. Just got to quick press it. So this, also, this has a battery meter on it, and it has USB-C and USB 3.0 or 3.1, something like that. Supposedly really good. Mike said this was a great little uh, item. So I grabbed that. I grabbed some of these little toggle switches with the LEDs on them. Uh, the second one here is to power the solar charge controller, which I have on a separate switch. So I don't have that on all the time because when that's plugged in, that stays, that just automatically turns on and starts draining the battery. So I have an option here to turn that on and off. Uh, the last thing I put in here was, and I'd already, I'd already purchased this, was this battery uh, meter, which, there we go will give you the stats on your battery. And if you have your, if you have the radio on, it'll change and showing what kind of power I'm using in here. Now I bought this because originally, like I said, all this was going to go into that battery pack that I was going to build kind of mimicking what Mike had done. Well, after we had our little discussion and I was like, well, you know what, maybe I should put it all in one thing. I thought, okay, let's get this thing wired up in there. What I didn't realize is, uh, Wiring this is a massive pain in the butt, and the instructions for it are horrible. So I do not recommend, unless you just are somewhat of a masochist, I don't recommend adding this little module in here. It really doesn't serve much of a purpose except just kind of looks cool. But cutting this in, cutting this hole out inside this piece of sheet metal that's in here, you know, I went through about four blades with my Dremel trying to cut this thing out perfect and getting in there perfect. But the worst part and the worst nightmare was, was trying to wire this thing up. So that it would work in conjunction with the radio, the tuner, and all the stuff, all the other wiring that's in the back end. So I don't recommend getting one of these. I think you could probably use this space, utilize this space for other things you might need. Maybe some front uh, front facing uh, Anderson power poles, or maybe a you know a, a twelve volt uh, cigarette lighter attachment, or maybe another USB or something in there. There's other things you can do here. So unless you're just a masochist, I don't recommend grabbing one of these. It's fun. It's cool that I got it done, but I'll never ever do it again. So we'll get rid of that, turn off that, and we'll turn off the USB power and kill that off, and we'll kill that off. So again, um, guys, I will have all of the uh, links to everything that I use to build this down below. And if you do purchase some of the stuff that's on, at least some of the stuff that's from Amazon, it'll help out my channel so I can bring you guys more, uh, more videos. Uh, this came from DX Engineering. It's about $15. It's a little generic speaker. But, I mean, it is pretty loud. So we'll just get that, see if we can get that up here and see if we can get the sound in here. So that's a pretty pretty loud speaker. And it's going to be a lot louder than the top-facing one that's inside the radio anyway. So, 891. A uh, little speaker that runs the back of the radio. The Z100 Plus, And, of course, my little selection of panels or, or, or uh, panel things. So let's go around to the back. And I'll show you what I did back here. On the back side, again, I wanted to make this so that all I had to do is pop this off, attach my antenna. And over here, I know I've got uh, four different Anderson power poles, but only the top set here is connected at the moment. I'm gonna, I am gonna—I haven't really figured what I want to do with the other three yet. But this one here is for plugging in the solar panels. So if I'm out in the field doing POTAs, I just plug that in there and it starts charging the battery for me. Everything's peachy. So let's pop this open. And I'm just going to warn you now, it is kind of a uh, kind of a nightmare in here. Okay, so we're back now. I got the back side of this off. You can kind of see inside here. If you want to bring the camera down and kind of show inside, hopefully there's enough light to really see uh, what's going on. It, it's a spaghetti mess inside of here. But I have my Anderson power pole distribution block here. I got my 15 amp hour bioinno battery here. This is the solar charge control, which is running out to the Anderson power poles. That's all, and all the wiring runs back in here for everything that goes back in the uh, front panel for the radio and such. Uh, it's pretty simple setup. I mean, I, it probably would have been a lot simpler had I not put that battery uh, gauge on the front there and just kept with a couple of switches and a couple of little, uh, you know, USB power uh, ports. But this works. I mean, this is easy to deal with. If I need to recharge the battery, say I'm at home here and I'm not going to be running out with solar, all I have to do is, un is pop this off and plug this into the wall socket that has the wall charge that comes with the BioNO uh, battery. 
so I can just recharge it all right here and be ready to roll. So that is pretty much it. Um, the Z100 Plus, I want to talk about the tuner real quick. Uh, the Z100 Plus tuner is really cool. It has two different options. You have a uh, AC power adapter, which will plug into the wall, or if you take out the four screws on the side of the item or on the side of, on, on, that are on the side of the uh, the tuner. You pull that off, there's a place to put in eight AA batteries. And they claim, I, don't, I can't remember exactly what the exact amount was, they claim that with those eight batteries in there, sitting inside, it should last two to three years. So time will tell, we'll see what happens. I do a couple POTAs and some activations and things and see how that all works out. Uh, but for the moment, you know, that's all in here. I got, I'm running on completely on battery, not running off the battery, off, off the battery, so it's got its own power source, separate from the battery. And uh, yeah, everything else looks like it's working here. So uh, with that, I guess, uh, don't really know what else to say. The uh, case, like I said, is a, is a uh, travel case for musicians, basically. I picked this up on Amazon. Oh, well, the one cool thing about the case, and I can't really do much about it now, um, it does have the ability, it's got a, handle here and wheels in the front. So this thing will wheel around like, like luggage. So it makes it a lot easier to, to drag this thing around because it does weigh a little bit with all the stuff that's in here. So uh, these run about, I think this case ran about 250 bucks. And of course, 891 is what it is and the, the tuner is what it is. Uh, again, guys, I'll have the, uh, the uh, links to everything down below in the video here. So with that being said, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed this uh, this build. I really, you know, I, I understand why Mike didn't show anybody how he wired up his battery boxes because it was a freaking nightmare. Honestly, it was a freaking nightmare. Uh, again, most of it was self-inflicted because I decided to put this, uh, this little battery meter on here. If I'd left that out, it would have all been pretty, probably pretty simple and probably a lot less wires inside. Uh, but just make sure everything's grounded properly, getting everything mounted in here. Uh, the uh, 891 is actually it comes with a little tiny uh, mounting bracket that's supposed to be like in your vehicle or something like that. That's actually screwed down to the bottom shelf that I purchased for this case, uh, along with the uh, speaker is also screwed in. The uh, battery on the back, since I have no way of actually mounting that, and I'm sure as hell I'm not going to be screwing into it, that's actually just zip tied in the back, so really high, high uh, strength zip ties. Same with the tuner. The tuner's uh, been brought up. I just drilled a couple holes to show me with the SWR. Uh, LED, the tuning LED, and then the tune button, which you really don't have to mess with. Once you key up on this on the radio, this thing goes into action and starts uh, measure, or matching your uh, your resonance and everything for your antennas. Uh, so that's the only the other thing that's just zip tied in there. Everything else in here I use pretty much uh, those step bits we used before when we were building some of the other projects. I use one of those step bits to drill these holes in here. And again, for this rectangular piece here, that was just... Uh, a lot of little little uh, metal cutting blades from uh, for my Dremel. Uh, would I build this again? Yeah, but I'd probably do it a whole lot different than I did this first time. Uh, and I might even change it down the road. I might say the hell with this thing and, and throw that out and just redesign the whole front plate so I can just lessen the amount of wires in here and the amount of confusion. Because right now the way I've got in here, I've, all the wires are marked. So if I have to take this thing apart, I at least know how to put it back together. But it's just, it's it's too much. It's really too much. Um, but I got it done. I'm happy with it. I've already taken it out once before and tried it out, out on the front porch here. And, uh, for about 10 minutes till the mosquitoes were using me as a buffet and, uh, just wanted to make sure that everything I did, I want to prove that it works. I hooked up, hooked up my m 2.0, which is right back here. Um, and got that all set up and I was able to pick up the stations. This, the radio works just fine. Everything in here seems to be working great. There's no blown fuses. There's no major issues or anything. I haven't any, there's no excessive noise. So the way that I've got it wired up, whatever I did, I did right. So that's it, guys. I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you uh, would, please give me a thumbs up and let YouTube know that uh, this video is cool and blah, blah, blah. So it'll be shown to more people. And uh, if you're a first timer here and want to consider joining the channel, you know, Ham Radio for Non-Techies, I try to simplify all the technical stuff that's in the Ham Radio hobby and try to explain it to you guys in a way that's easier to digest and get you on the air as quickly as possible. Whether it's whether you're coming from, you know, knowing nothing about ham radio and want to learn something, 
The website that I built and all the resources I've got on the site there will help you learn, study, and get your, your exam uh, passed and like, get, your, get your, uh, your license or licenses, depending on how far you want to take it. And I got a whole bunch of other information on there. So if you like that, you know, please consider subscribing. Click on the little bell, and that'll let people know or let you know when I have uh, new videos. Until then, guys, uh, my name is Scott. My call sign is KI5MPL. This is Ham Raider for non-techies, and we are clear.